Now let's talk about some of SRS's popular solutions. What types of devices benefit from solutions like Wow HD, True Surround, and True Volume? Well, we start with Wow HD. It's very effective uh, with headphones, for example, because Wow the spatial uh, processes in Wow HD can take headphone audio seems to uh, come from the middle of your head, and that's really unnatural. And Wow HD can take it out of your head. It can also improve, like for small earbuds or small headphones, or even over-the-ear headphones. It can improve the perceived bass response because it incorporates true bass. And it also improves the uh, sort of the part of taking it out of your head is we use uh, some vertical spatial enhancement as well to create a, a uniform sound field that's outside the head. Um, it can also be adjusted for um, small speakers on small devices. Uh, iPod docks, things like that, where you've got a couple of relatively small speakers, but not tiny speakers, can significantly enhance uh, the sound quality of those those kinds of devices. True Surround has uh, started out as being real popular in uh, DVD players. It was basically the DVD player could now decode the Dolby Digital soundtrack and render surround sound right out of the two analog outputs of the DVD player. But then, uh, when DVD players uh, started selling for $4.27. Uh, True Surround kind of migrated into TVs and that's where it's been ever since. And it makes a lot of sense to be in a TV because um, now I can treat every source. Anything that you play through the TV, whether it be broadcast or something local, True Surround can uh, render surround from the two speakers in the, in the TV. So that's really uh, uh, the, the most popular area that True Surround is used. Um, if you look at Focus and TrueBase, uh, they're frequently used in automotive applications uh, where you again want to raise the image or integrate the image and create sort of a virtual subwoofer using TrueBase in the car. Um, Circle Surround uh, is used in AV receivers and automotive applications. So there's, there's a wide range of, of applications. And then another area that we've recently sort of uh, been successful with all of the technologies is in PCs because especially in laptops and netbooks where you again you've got tiny speakers you've got closely spaced speakers uh, you want to get the best possible sound out of those devices and by using our signal processing like True Surround or Wow HD we can make that happen. What about True Volume? What can you tell me about True Volume? Everybody loves True Volume. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think anybody has not experienced the the huge variations in volume when you switch channels uh, on cable or live or, or over-the-air broadcast or satellite, the, the, the volume jumps all over the place because there's no volume standard. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, the really annoying thing is you just get settled in, you switch the channel, you turn the volume up and down, this is the volume I want, and then the commercial comes on and blows you out of your chair. So true volume is, again, based on psychoacoustic principles in the sense that it's based on how people actually perceive volume changes at different frequencies. And the, the level and aggressiveness of correction of true volume is, 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 is designed to be different at different frequencies. But what it essentially does is it levels out all of those volume shifts. And it does it in a way that it's not really perceptible. You want anything like this that levels volume shifts to be as transparent as possible. You don't want any kinds of side effects. You don't want people to say, oh, that volume thing is operating. Just want it to be in the background and just keep those level changes under control. And that's what true volume does. Now, earlier attempts, like a traditional automatic gain control, are based on the electrical, simple electrical level of the signal. And by doing that, you don't really level out the perceived volume, and you don't really take into account how people, uh, again, perceive volume shifts at different frequencies. So they're not very transparent, and most people just turn them off because they're too annoying. So true volume is really um, an attempt to create a, a very effective volume leveling solution that people won't turn off.